It was a car wreck in 2003, um, single oil vehicle accident. I was a passenger and my friend was driving and the uh, truck rolled a couple times. Uh, and uh, the only thing I remember is waking up and the truck was on fire and I couldn't move um, my hands or arm, uh, legs or anything. And he pulled me out and they tell me, they revived me on the scene uh, that night. And then life watched me to Wichita. And that's where they found uh, my C5 and C6 vertebrae were shattered. And I had a bruised spinal cord, it wasn't severed, which is good because I'm an incomplete spinal cord injury. So there still was signals going through, just very few of them. And um, so they, they did uh, cadaver transplants. They put cadaver vertebrae in and stabilized uh, my spinal cord there. And then I had a few more complications where um, they were giving me blood thinners and I started uh, bleeding internally one night and bled out three pints of blood or so and crashed again and that night I, they said I was gone for about five minutes. My lungs filled with mucus and heart stopped and stopped breathing and they had to do an emergency trach on me and the whole work so so yeah I was, I was kind of a mess for about a month or so. I was in the hospital there, uh, basically in ICU for about a month. Name's Christopher Bond. Everyone calls me Kit, though. I come from Southwest Kansas. A lot of my friends ask me you know, or say, you know, like I can't, I don't know how you get around school or like how tough it is. And I just, you know, sometimes I'll tell them it's like doing lunges between classes for you guys, or or tell them, yeah, just try to go through class with your hand curled up and you can't move your fingers and write and drink and all that. And they will, and I'm like, yeah, it's insane. So, you know, when they when I do that, and a lot of my friends are PTOT students, um, they really kind of understand that, yeah, a little improvement even is something worth going to China for. So, you know, just imagine, uh, you know, like, like you said, you know, you're just able to get out of bed, you know, right when you want to and everything. But with me, it's a little bit more difficult than anything I do, just, you know, being a quadriplegic. Um, being able to transfer into bed, I have to, you know, be able to pick a leg up and put a board under me, and because I use sliding boards, it makes it a little easier. And be able to use enough energy to slide over completely on the bed or wherever, and and after that, it's not quite done. So I have to pick up my big old long legs and flip them on the bed and get all settled in there. So it's it's definitely a process, and it took a lot of getting used to, but um, you know, it's just one of those things where I promised myself I'd never let my uh, wheelchair or my disability dictate what I do in life and so if you know, I see to set my set a goal on something I'm gonna do it so you know just having that kind of an attitude has helped with you know being able to do better on my transfers and and stuff like that and it's raised my independence level a little bit in that fashion well, the first stem cell therapy I'd ever heard of was a couple of years after my spinal cord injury. And it was uh, the olfactory transplant surgery in Portugal. And I had really not, not too much knowledge about stem cells at that point. So I did some investigation and, and learned what they were doing. So it sounded like, you know, a proactive step in the, the right direction. And uh, went ahead and did that in 2005. And then, um, after that surgery in Portugal, it was you know open spinal cord surgery and everything. I uh, went ahead and changed my major in college to biology and biochem, and and uh, tried to study it a lot more. So at that point, I got a lot more knowledge on stem cells and really could figure out what they were and how they would work. And I would do a lot of random searches on the internet about them, and that's how I found out about uh, China and their stem cell therapy. After the Portugal procedure, I kind of realized, you know, it's all a bunch of baby steps. So, you know, this might not be the be all end all of everything, you know. I might not be skipping to Malou after all of this. But, you know, like I said, it's some kind of step in the right direction. And I've noticed progress from it. Um, and I know if this isn't like a, f you know, foolproof cure for spinal cord injury, it's it's at least you know doing something and addressing the issue and and if someone can gain more from this from my experience and build on that then you know and make the next best thing 
then it's you know that much better for anybody. Well, my experience the first time around, I mean, you know, I didn't notice any kind of changes up until the first week um, before I left, and then um, just small, small increase in sensation. Uh, two or three months afterwards, I got a lot more sensation in my uh, core and uh, a bit more strength in my tricep and core. And then even a couple months ago, I got a lot more like deep sensation and stuff like that in my legs. So it was probably around December when I made the decision that uh, I'd been getting a lot of good results in therapy and I was like my transfers back home were really great. I was I was doing well with my, with my transfers. My sensation was going really well, and I was getting a lot more of that. And it just, you know, it seemed at the time that if I was going to do it again, now would be the time to to do it between like my last real semester of college and and everything else. That um, you know, I'd give it another shot and see what else I could get back. So uh, what I've been having is uh, the umbilical cord. Uh, stem cell treatment. I've had six injections. I got here originally just doing five, so I added one IV injection in there just, you know, since I'm here and I can get an extra treatment, I might as well. So I've had two IVs and um, four spinal injections for the lumbar. IV is just real simple. It's, you know, as simple as hooking up an IV port and putting the stem cells in. Uh, the spinal is a little, it's a little bit more, but not that bad. They come in, give you an IV port, put an IV in you, and then when they're ready, they take you upstairs and uh, wheel you into a little room and turn you on your side and put you in a fetal position and then give you a, a little bit of Valium and uh, some local anesthetic and, and uh, just do their spinal procedure. And it's all of, I don't know, about a 30 minute process usually. It's a standard process even back in the States. They do spinal taps all the time there, epidurals there. Um, you know, I'm a natural worrier and I'm, I always worry about little things. So, you know, I, I always, and I know a lot of the risks involved with sticking a, a needle into the spinal cord. But, you know, it's really not that bad of a process and not a whole bunch to be worried about. Yeah, my, my therapist is Dr. Tom. Uh, he's good, uh, definitely, definitely drives you. Definitely works, yeah. So, which is good. I mean, number one, you know, you don't want to be too completely bored just sitting around the hospital all day. So it's it's good to get you active and get you moving and get the blood flowing. And and then you know also, it's working the parts of the body that need to be worked. Like we do setups, and my core, of course, needs a lot of work, uh, and just overall strengthening stuff. And and then you have electric wave therapy, which is good. It shocks the legs and gets the muscles in the legs a little bit more active. And then, you know, acupuncture, uh, which I don't know too much about. I just know they stick you with needles and hit a little nerve and leave them in there. You know, I'm here to tell you that personally, in my opinion, as a spinal cord injury, as a quadriplegic, I've noticed a, a huge gain in quality of life. and and. Um, I can't say, you know, I'd recommend it for everyone because everyone might not, uh, you know, really appreciate my gain. You know, they might have other ideas in their head, but you know, to me, it's it's been a real uh, a real help. And you know, if I get a chance to do it again, I probably would. I if I went back in time and had the same choice to do it again, I would. So. Well, majoring in biology and biochem, just right now I graduate in December and uh, trying to start applying to, uh, to schools for neurobiology. And I really want to try to emphasize in like cellular and uh, regenerative uh, neurological processes. And, you know, I've, I say that I've been the guinea pig, so now I want a few of my own. <laughs> <laughs>